Service Teardown, HP Pavilion 27 AIO PC. Removal. Important, take care not to scratch the display while performing this procedure. Place the unit face down on an anti-static clean surface. Loosen the two captive P2 Phillips head screws that secure the stand to the stand hinge. Slide the stand off the stand hinge and remove. Replacement. Slide the stand onto the stand hinge. Tighten the two captive P2 Phillips head screws that secure the stand to the stand hinge. Before you begin, remove the stand. Removal. Important. Take care not to bend or twist the webcam enclosure while performing this procedure. If the mechanism that slides the webcam enclosure up and down is damaged, an entire display panel assembly spare must be requested in order to repair it. Slide the webcam enclosure into the up position. Carefully release the edges of the webcam enclosure cover from the webcam enclosure and remove it. Slide the webcam enclosure into the down position. Carefully remove the thermal pad from the webcam bracket. Remove the 3mm P1 Phillips head screw that secures the webcam bracket to the webcam enclosure. Remove the webcam bracket from the webcam. Peel back the retention tape and disconnect the webcam cable from the connector on the webcam board. Remove the webcam board. Replacement. Connect the webcam cable into the connector on the webcam board and replace the retention tape. Place the webcam into position on the webcam enclosure. Place the webcam bracket into position on the webcam. Replace the 3mm P1 Phillips head screw that secures the webcam bracket to the webcam enclosure. Carefully place the thermal pad onto the webcam bracket. Set the webcam enclosure cover onto the webcam enclosure and gently apply pressure to the edges of the webcam enclosure cover to secure it into place. Before you begin, remove the stand. Removal. Loosen the P2 Phillips head screw that secures the I.O. port's rear cover to the chassis. Using a flat-bladed, non-metallic tool, carefully separate the edges of the I.O. port's rear cover from the display panel assembly. Slide the I.O. port's rear cover off of the stand hinge and remove. Replacement. Slide the I.O. port's rear cover onto the stand hinge. Align the cutouts in the I.O. port's rear cover with the external connectors on the motherboard and lower the I.O. port's rear cover into position on the display panel assembly. Carefully apply pressure to the edges of the I.O. port's rear cover to secure it into place on the display panel assembly. Tighten the captive P2 Phillips head screw that secures the I.O. port's rear cover to the chassis. Before you begin, remove the stand and I.O. port's rear cover. Removal. Remove the five 6.5 mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the stand hinge to the chassis. Lift the stand hinge off the chassis and remove. Place the stand hinge into position on the chassis. Replace the five 6.5 mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the stand hinge to the chassis. Before you begin, remove the stand and I.O. port's rear cover. Removal. Remove the 6.5 mm P2 Phillips head screw that secures the storage drive assembly to the chassis. Slide the storage drive assembly toward the top edge of the unit to release it from the retention tabs. Lift the storage drive assembly straight up and out of the chassis and turn the storage drive assembly over to access the SATA cable and connector. Disconnect the SATA cable from the connector on the storage drive and remove the storage drive assembly. Replacement. Important. If you are replacing the storage drive, the mounting screws and bracket will need to be removed from the old storage drive and attached to the new storage drive. Align the key in the SATA cable with the notch in the storage drive connector and insert the SATA cable. Align the retention tabs on the storage drive assembly with the cutouts in the chassis and place the storage drive assembly into position. Slide the storage drive assembly 
toward the bottom edge of the unit to secure it into place. Replace the 6.5mm P1 Phillips head screw that secures the storage drive assembly to the chassis. Before you begin, remove the stand and I.O. port's rear cover. Removal. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the power button board ZIF connector and disconnect the power button board ribbon cable from the power button board. Release the power button board from the retention clip and slide it out of the slots in the chassis. Remove the power button board. Replacement. Carefully slide the power button board into the slots in the chassis and under the retention clip. Insert the power button board ribbon cable into the power button board ZIF connector on the power button board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Before you begin, remove the stand and I.O. port's rear cover. Removal. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the OSD board ZIF connector and disconnect the OSD board ribbon cable from the OSD board. Release the OSD board from the retention clip and slide it out of the slots in the chassis. Remove the OSD board. Replacement. Carefully slide the OSD board into the slots in the chassis and under the retention clip. Insert the OSD board ribbon cable into the OSD board ZIF connector on the OSD board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, and stand hinge. Removal. Remove the 7 6.5mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the EMI shield to the chassis. Lift the EMI shield straight up and off of external connectors on the motherboard and remove. Replacement. Align the cutouts in the EMI shield with the external connectors on the motherboard and lower the EMI shield into position on the chassis. Replace the 7 6.5mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the EMI shield to the chassis. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, and motherboard EMI shield. Removal. Press the CMOS button on the motherboard near the CMOS battery. CMOS factory settings are now reset. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, and motherboard EMI shield. Removal. Push both retention arms outward simultaneously to release the memory module to the spring tension position. Grasp the memory module by the edges and pull gently to remove it from the memory module slot on the motherboard. Replacement. Align the notch in the memory module with the key in the memory module slot in the motherboard and insert the memory module. Press the memory module down until the retention arms click into place. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, and motherboard EMI shield. Removal. Remove the 3mm P1 Phillips head screw that secures the solid state drive to the motherboard and allow it to release to the spring tension position. Grasp the solid state drive by the edges and pull gently to remove it from the solid state drive slot on the motherboard. Replacement. Align the notch in the solid state drive with the key in the solid state drive slot in the motherboard and insert the solid state drive. Press the solid state drive down and replace the 3mm P1 Phillips head screw that secures the solid state drive to the motherboard. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, and motherboard EMI shield. Removal. Caution. Use care when disconnecting the wireless LAN antenna cables from the wireless LAN module. A damaged cable or connector can degrade tablet performance. Carefully disconnect the wireless LAN antenna cables from the wireless LAN module by grasping the connectors with a small pair of needle nose pliers or tweezers. 
Remove the 3mm P1 Phillips head screw that secures the wireless LAN module to the motherboard. Grasp the wireless LAN module by the edges and pull gently to remove it from the wireless LAN module slot on the motherboard. Replacement Align the notch in the wireless LAN module with the key in the wireless LAN module slot in the motherboard and insert the wireless LAN module. Replace the 3mm P1 Phillips head screw that secures the wireless LAN module to the motherboard. Carefully connect the wireless LAN antenna cables onto the connectors on the wireless LAN module. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, and motherboard EMI shield. Removal Disconnect the fan cable from the connector on the motherboard. Remove the fan cable from the routing channel on the chassis. Remove the three 6.5mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the fan to the chassis. Lift the fan off of the standoffs and remove. Replacement Place the fan onto the standoffs on the chassis. Replace the three 6.5mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the fan to the chassis. Route the fan cable through the routing channel on the chassis. Connect the fan cable into the connector on the motherboard. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, motherboard EMI shield, and system fan. Removal. Note, the thermal module has numbers adjacent to the following six screws. Loosen the six captive P2 Phillips head screws that secure the thermal module over the processor and graphics card in numerical order. Loosen the captive P2 Phillips head screw that secures the thermal module to the chassis. Lift the thermal module off of the processor and graphics card and remove. Replacement Inspect the thermal pads on the thermal module and graphics card to ensure they are properly positioned. If one is torn or otherwise damaged, it needs to be replaced. Using an alcohol swab, carefully remove the thermal grease from the thermal module and processors. Apply new thermal grease to the processors. Align the screw holes on the thermal module with the standoffs on the motherboard and graphics card and place the thermal module into position. Tighten the six captive P2 Phillips head screws that secure the thermal module over the processor and graphics card in numerical order. Tighten the captive P2 Phillips head screw that secures the thermal module to the chassis. Before you begin, remove the stand. I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, motherboard EMI shield, system fan, and thermal module. Removal Remove the four 3mm P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card to the motherboard. Lift the graphics card straight up and off the standoffs to disconnect it from the motherboard. Replacement Align the graphics card screw holes with the standoffs on the motherboard and place the graphics card into position. Press down on the right edge of the graphics card to connect it to the motherboard. Replace the four 3mm P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card to the motherboard. Inspect the thermal pads on the graphics card to ensure they are properly positioned. If one is torn or otherwise damaged, it needs to be replaced. Before you begin, remove the stand. I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, motherboard EMI shield, system fan, and thermal module. Removal. Press down to release the CPU load lever from its retention tab and pull it back. Lift the load plate off the socket. Important, identify the pin 1 triangle on the socket and CPU prior to removing the CPU. Important, when handling the CPU, do not touch the CPU contacts. Carefully lift the CPU straight up and out of the socket. Replacement Align the pin 1 triangle on the CPU with the pin 1 triangle on the socket. Carefully lower the CPU into position in the socket. Swing the load plate down. Lock the load lever under its retaining tab to secure the CPU in place.
Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, motherboard EMI shield, M.2 SSD module, wireless LAN module, system fan, thermal module, graphics card, and CPU. Removal. Disconnect the following cables from the motherboard. Webcam ribbon cable, backlight cable, OSD board ribbon cable, touchscreen control cable, speaker cable, power button board ribbon cable, two display panel cables, SATA cable. Remove the two 6.5mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard to the chassis. While supporting the motherboard with both hands, lift it straight up and off of the standoffs on the chassis and remove. Replacement Note, if you are installing a new motherboard, remove the following from the old motherboard and install onto the new motherboard. Memory modules CMOS battery Thermal pads, if undamaged Inspect the thermal pad on the chassis. If it is torn or otherwise damaged, it needs to be replaced. Lower the motherboard onto the standoffs on the chassis. Important, ensure that no cables have been pinched between the motherboard and chassis. Replace the two 6.5mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard to the chassis. Connect the following cables into the connectors on the motherboard. Webcam ribbon cable, backlight cable, OSD board ribbon cable, touchscreen control cable, speaker cable, power button board ribbon cable, two display panel cables, SATA cable. Important, after motherboard replacement, be sure to complete post-installation tasks as required that may include verifying functionality of the computer, updating the BIOS, updating DMI and other settings. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, motherboard EMI shield, M.2 SSD module, wireless LAN module, system fan, thermal module, graphics card, CPU, and motherboard. Removal. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the power button board zip connector and disconnect the power button board ribbon cable from the power button board. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the OSD board ZIF connector and disconnect the OSD board ribbon cable from the OSD board. Disconnect the touchscreen control cable from the connector on the touchscreen control board. Remove the wireless antenna and speaker cables from the routing channel on the motherboard support bracket. Remove the 7 6.5mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard support bracket to the chassis. Lift the motherboard support bracket straight up and off of the standoffs on the chassis and remove. Replacement Note, if you are installing a new motherboard support bracket, remove the following from the old motherboard support bracket and install onto the new motherboard support bracket. Touchscreen control cable Power button board ribbon cable OSD board ribbon cable Motherboard thermal pad if undamaged Lower the motherboard support bracket onto the standoffs on the chassis. Important, ensure that no cables have been pinched between the motherboard support bracket and chassis. Replace the 7 6.5mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard support bracket to the chassis. Route the wireless LAN antenna and speaker cables through the routing channel on the motherboard support bracket. Insert the OSD board ribbon cable into the OSD board ZIF connector on the OSD board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Connect the touchscreen control cable into the touchscreen control board. Insert the power button board ribbon cable into the power button board zip connector on the power button board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, motherboard EMI shield, M.2 SSD module, wireless LAN module, system fan, thermal module, graphics card, CPU, motherboard, and motherboard support bracket. Removal. Using minimal force, lift the locking bars up on the two touchscreen ZIF connectors and disconnect the touchscreen ribbon cables from the touchscreen control board. Remove the two 3mm P1 Phillips head screws that secure the touchscreen control board to the chassis. Lift the touchscreen control board off of the chassis and remove. Replacement 
Place the touchscreen control board into position on the chassis. Replace the two 3mm P1 Phillips head screws that secure the touchscreen control board to the chassis. Insert the two touchscreen ribbon cables into the touchscreen ZIF connectors on the touchscreen control board and press the locking bars down to lock the cables into place. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, motherboard EMI shield, M.2 SSD module, wireless LAN module, system fan, thermal module, graphics card, CPU, motherboard, motherboard support bracket, and touchscreen control board. Removal. Important, make careful note of the routing of the speaker cable for later replacement. Slide the speakers off of the standoffs on the chassis and remove. Replacement. Important, ensure the four rubber screw grommets are properly installed before replacing the speakers. Carefully slide the speakers onto the standoffs on the chassis. Ensure the speaker cable is properly routed. Before you begin, remove the stand. I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, motherboard EMI shield, M.2 SSD module, wireless LAN module, system fan, thermal module, graphics card, CPU, motherboard, motherboard support bracket, touchscreen control bracket, and speakers. Removal. Remove the eight 6.5mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the rear cover to the chassis. Release the edges of the bottom half of the rear cover from the chassis. Important, both the upper left and right edges of the back cover are held in place by strips of stretch release tape. Each tape strip has a plastic pull tab attached to one end. Carefully flex the bottom edge of the rear cover and grasp the pull tab on one of the strips of tape and carefully pull it toward the bottom of the unit. Important, if the stretch release tape strips are pulled too quickly, they will break before releasing the rear cover. Repeat step 3 on the remaining strip of stretch release tape. Carefully release the rest of the rear cover from the adhesive that secures it to the unit and remove. Replacement. Important, new strips of stretch release tape must be applied to the unit before replacing the rear cover. Please refer to the maintenance and service guide for information on where to place the strips. Align the edges of the rear cover with the edges of the unit and lower it straight down into position. Apply pressure to the center and edges of the rear cover to secure it to the chassis. Replace the eight 6.5 mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the rear cover to the chassis. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, motherboard EMI shield, M.2 SSD module, wireless LAN module, system fan, thermal module, graphics card, CPU, motherboard, motherboard support bracket, touchscreen control bracket, speakers, and rear cover. Removal. Remove the wireless LAN antenna cable from the routing tab on the middle bracket. Peel back the metallic tape that secures the wireless LAN antenna transceiver to the middle bracket. Carefully separate the wireless LAN antenna transceiver from the adhesive that secures it to the middle bracket and remove. Replacement. Place the wireless LAN antenna transceiver into position on the middle bracket and apply pressure to adhere it into place. Replace the metallic tape that secures the wireless LAN antenna transceiver to the middle bracket. Route the wireless LAN antenna cable under the routing tab on the middle bracket. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, motherboard EMI shield, M.2 SSD module, wireless LAN module, system fan, thermal module, graphics card, CPU, motherboard, motherboard support bracket, touchscreen control bracket, speakers, and rear cover. Removal. Important. Take care not to bend or twist the webcam enclosure while performing this procedure. If the mechanism that slides the webcam enclosure up and down is damaged, an entire display panel assembly spare must be requested in order to repair it. Slide the webcam enclosure into the up position. 
Carefully release the edges of the webcam enclosure cover from the webcam enclosure and remove it. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the webcam ZIF connector and disconnect the webcam ribbon cable from the webcam transport board. Turn the rear cover over. Remove the 6 2.5mm P0 Phillips head screws that secure the webcam enclosure to the rear cover. Carefully remove the webcam ribbon cable from the webcam enclosure. Remove the webcam enclosure. Replacement. Carefully guide the webcam ribbon cable through the cutouts in the webcam enclosure. Align the screw holes in the webcam enclosure with the screw holes in the rear cover and place it into position. Replace the 6 2.5mm P0 Phillips head screws that secure the webcam enclosure to the rear cover. Turn the rear cover over. Insert the webcam ribbon cable into the webcam ZIF connector on the webcam transport board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Set the webcam enclosure cover onto the webcam enclosure and gently apply pressure to the edges of the webcam enclosure cover to secure it into place. Before you begin, remove the stand, I.O. port's rear cover, stand hinge, motherboard EMI shield, M.2 SSD module, wireless LAN module, system fan, thermal module, graphics card, CPU, motherboard, motherboard support bracket, touchscreen control bracket, speakers, and rear cover. Removal. Remove the SATA cable from the routing tabs on the middle bracket and remove. Remove the display panel cables from the routing taps on the middle frame. Disconnect the two display panel cable connectors from the display panel and remove the display panel cables. Remove the backlight cable from the routing tabs on the middle bracket. Remove the two 6.5mm P2 Phillips head screws that secure the middle bracket to the display panel assembly. While supporting the display panel assembly, slide the middle bracket off of the display panel assembly and remove. Replacement. Note, if you're installing a new middle bracket, remove the following from the old middle bracket and install onto the new middle bracket. Wireless LAN antennas. Motherboard thermal pad, if undamaged. Note, if you're installing a new display panel assembly, remove the following from the old display panel assembly and install onto the new display panel assembly. Backlight cable. Slide the middle bracket onto the standoffs on the display panel assembly. Replace the two 6.5mm. P2 Phillips head screws that secure the middle bracket to the display panel assembly. Route the backlight cable through the routing tabs on the middle frame. Connect the two display panel cables into the connectors on the display panel assembly. Route the two display panel cables through the routing tabs on the middle frame. Route the SATA cable through the routing tabs on the middle frame. <laughs>